I make these boxes that hold one or two decks of cards and then can be personalized and make great gifts for people. So uh, this is the video on how I make them. I start off with some stock. It's about an inch and an eighth high by about three eighths of an inch wide. Then we go to our 45 degree cross cut sled in order to make the sides of the box. This cross cut sled is not my own invention of course. You can find a million videos on YouTube on how to make these. I've customized this one a little bit. There's a stop block there at the back that I can set to one of the three lengths that I need to make the two different sizes of boxes. Uh, normally when I'm making these, I make a whole bunch of them at once, not just one. I usually will make three or four or five or ten or whatever the case may be. I recently had an order for six of these things, so having uh, some jigs to be able to knock these things out pretty quickly comes in handy. That little stop block at the back there is just held in with a dowel and I'm just taking it out. I'm going to move it up to the next length that I need for these particular boxes that I'm making. And then that little cam arm thing on the side uh, holds the piece securely in place while I make the cut. Um, and then the whole process goes pretty quick once you uh, have things set up. Once all the pieces are cut, uh, we need to glue them together. And again, I'm using this little jig that I made. It's nothing fancy. It's a piece of melamine uh, with two rails attached to it that make a 90 degree corner. Uh, I use melamine because glue doesn't stick to it or if it does, it comes off pretty easily with a scraper so I can use it over and over again and not worry about getting it too messy. As you can see, I start off by just taking a piece of masking tape, uh, the length of the jig and uh, put it up against that long rail. And then I can start sticking the pieces to the tape and I just alternate a long one and a short one and a long one and a short one, butting each one up against the previous one while pressing it against that long rail. That way I know I've got a uh, one edge that will be straight and flush uh, with each other. So if there's any variations in the, in the height of the wood, uh, it's only gonna be on one side and I can clean that up pretty easily. Uh, then we throw on some glue and because it's end grain, we tend to be a little bit generous with it because it will suck some of it up. And then I fold the whole thing up into a box and stick it in that corner. Uh, and that makes sure that the whole box is gonna be square at 90 degrees, but also lets me push on that one corner and apply pressure to all the joints at once while I finish taping the box so that I get some nice tight seams. Wipe off a little bit of excess glue to make life easier a little bit later on. And I just repeat the process for all the ones that I'm doing. Uh, once the glue is dried, I just peel the tape off and I've sort of less, left with four carcasses. Um, I take them over to the belt sander just so that I can run the faces over each side once just to get rid of any imperfections so that uh, the surface that I'll be gluing the lids to is as flat as it can reasonably be. So once they've all been sanded, I get my lids, which again, have all been pre-cut. And the lids, uh, you'll notice here in a moment, are actually cut larger than the boxes themselves, pretty much. Uh, not by much, but just by some. Just in case the box, for whatever reason, is slightly out of square, I can always overhang it on all the sides just to make sure the whole thing is covered. Uh, I use a bunch of clamps and just glue all of them up. Those clamps are just those uh, uh, spring clamps and they're perfect for this because the, the lids are flat and the boxes are flat so I don't need to force wood into any particular shape. I just need it to hold together while the glue dries. And here's the gratuitous million clamp shot that every woodworker seems to have. And there's the four boxes that I'm making in this particular batch. Next is back to the table saw and all I'm going to be doing here is just cleaning up the edges and ripping off the overhangs on the lids. And uh, this really cleans up the edge of the boxes nicely. And I just, as you see, sneak up on the side of it. So I'm just taking a skim off of each side to get rid of the overhang of the lid and any glue and just making a nice clean flush face on all the sides. We'll fast forward here a little bit. You don't need to sit and watch me do it on all of them. But that just gives me a nice, I'll say square in quotes box because odds are it's probably not perfectly square, nor does it really need to be. 
the uh, top just needs to fit the bottom and since they were built together they they will then it's over to the sander and i just uh knock off each corner i just like the better it looks better i think if the corners aren't perfectly square and i sand each face on that box as well so that uh it's just a nice clean box next thing is just going to cut it in half here and for this uh right here i'm using my just my my rip fence to do this and i just keep rotating the box making sure I'm keeping the same face on the fence uh, each time so that the cut is going to be even all the way around. Although if you will look closely, you'll notice on that one, I actually flipped it around, which uh, explains why I was having trouble getting this one to fit and, and you know, be have nice flush faces on it when it was done. But uh, generally speaking, I keep the, the same face uh, to the fence. Although since making this video, I've actually changed the way I do this and I've built myself a little jig that I can clamp to my crosscut sled uh, that holds the piece securely uh, in the same spot each time I rotate it and works out a heck of a lot better than trying to do it like like that. So one, uh, but however, since I was doing it like that, I do need to sand uh, those cuts just so they're uh, perfectly flush and smooth and we get a nice tight seam on the box. So away we go with some sanding and I won't bore you with making me uh, making you watch all the sanding as I said in my keychain video it's boring to do and even more boring to watch so let's just go faster okay once they've been sanded I'm now just ripping down some pieces of maple that are going to serve as the liner for the box and is going to be the mechanism by which the friction will hold the top and bottom part together. Uh, and as you can see, I just ripped myself a bunch of them. Uh, I forget, it. those are only like an eighth or maybe a little more than an eighth uh, of an inch in width. And then I switch back to my 45 degree crosscut sled. And this time I'm gonna be using the other side of it, but you'll notice I don't have on this side of the sled sort of preset stops that I'm just plugging a, uh, a stopper block into I'm actually clamping them on and that's because I find with each box regardless of how much of a repetitive process it is that you use for this there's always going to be little variations in length that make for an unsnug fit inside of the box so uh, I've got marks on that side that show me roughly where each length needs to be but just like there I just fit, tried to fit the piece it doesn't quite fit it's a little bit too long so I just tap the stop block forward a little bit reclamp it grab the right piece and then I just run it through again sort of just sneaking up on the fit so that it's going to be um, a nice snug fit inside that box and that one looks like it goes in okay. So then I just move on to the next one and I repeat that process for all four sides. And I have to say it is uh, oddly satisfying, I guess, as the kids would say, when you get to that fourth piece that makes up the liner and it sort of sort of slips right in with just a nice little bit of friction and is a nice tight fit. Now I'm only doing one here to show you, but normally if I'm doing four or five or six of these, I'll do all the short sides first uh, and then add the long sides afterwards. That one fit pretty good. But I'm pretty sure this next one, I really like the way this next one fit. It just sort of tightens everything up in the box and seals up the seams and just uh, is really satisfying when it goes in properly. Yeah, a little bit tight. Perfect. Well, a little bit of a push and down it goes. And then we try to fit the lid. And I got pretty lucky with this box. And sorry, it's off camera here, but I got pretty lucky with this box in that it fit the first time. More often than not, it doesn't. It's too tight. And I will just have to take some uh, sandpaper on a block of wood and work my way around each of the uh, edges and sand them until the lid fits on uh, nice and snugly easy to pull off but not so easy that if you turn the box upside down it falls off so it's a pretty fine fit uh, here i just took out all the pieces because they all were dry fit nicely and the lid fit nicely and i'm just gluing them in place they don't need a lot of glue there's obviously not a lot of pressure that gets put on these things but i just glue them in so they don't go anywhere wipe up the excess glue let it dry and off we go on to the next step and the next step, of course, is just more sanding. Uh, and again, I'll go fast through this, but I use three grits. I go from 120 uh, to 150, I think it is, to 220. Uh, sometimes I go up to 320, but usually just that 220 is good enough. 
and then we're off to do some laser engraving and uh, I don't know if you can see in the computer on the back I've got the pattern that's going to be engraved on the computer screen and here I'm just finding the center of the box uh, and then let the laser do its thing. The whole process to engrave something this size um, is about about an hour. Smaller things obviously go more quickly, but this takes about an hour. But it's nice because you can just set it up and let it do its thing and you can carry on with doing other stuff. And once it's done, we just remove it from the bed. And here's what you're left with. Not too bad. So all it's left to do is add a little bit of finishing and to finish these I usually use uh, Danish oil. I like Danish oil. It's a mix of oil and varnish. Um, so it's not, uh, you know, pure varnish or, or um, shellac or, or spray varnish or anything like that. I prefer this just because it gives the wood or sorry, it brings out the, the color of the wood really nicely, but the varnish in it also provides a little bit of protection uh, for the wood as well. Uh, varnish is okay too, but I find it feels a little bit plasticky sometimes, just unnatural. But when this Danish oil is uh, dried, the wood feels great in your hand still, and it looks fantastic. We'll slow it down here for the money shot, as they call this one. On goes the varnish, and it really brings out the color in that wood. Beautiful. Love it. If any of my family happens to be watching and you maybe uh, have the last name Harrison and want one for Christmas, drop me a note. So after it's uh, dried, I just give it a little bit of a wipe off in case there's any excess that's remaining on the surface. Just to clean it up a little bit. Pop the lids together and there you go. And as you see, it will fit uh, quite nicely one deck of standard size playing cards. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.